In this experiment, we will explore the thin layer and column chromatography techniques to analyze and isolate pigments from the spinach leaves. The chlorophylls and carotenes are pigments of interest. The goal is to isolate the spinach pigments using the extraction. The pigments are later analyzed using thin layer chromatography TLC, and then the chlorophylls and carotenes will be separated from the rest of the pigments using column chromatography. All solvents used in this experiment are flammable. Pigments in the spinach leaf can be categorized into two groups, green pigments, such as chlorophylls, and yellow pigments, such as carotenes and xanthophylls. The following are the structures of the spinach pigments. In the order of increasing in polarity, from the top, carotenes, the least polar among of the pigments. Next is pheophytin A and B, which are gray. Chlorophylls A and B, the green pigments. And last, yellow xanthophylls, the most polar pigments among these pigments. The first part of the experiment is to isolate the pigments from the spinach leaves. The spinach leaves are ground using a mortar and pestle to release the pigments from the cellulose. It was ground with sand to help process and sodium sulfate and hydrous to absorb excess water from the leaves. The released pigments are dissolved in acetone, and then vacuum filtered to collect the filtrate and remove the solids. To purify the pigments, the crude pigments are later extracted using macroscale extraction with diethyl ether. The pigments are finally transferred into the organic layer. The organic layer is evaporated and concentrated spinach pigments are obtained. To analyze the components of the pigments, the thin layer chromatography technique is used. This chromatography technique is usually used to analyze a liquid sample that has components with different polarities. As any chromatography, the TLC technique consists of a stationary phase, which is a thin layer of adsorbent, such as silica gel, on a thin plastic or glass backing. The mobile phase, the eluent, is usually a mixture of solvents. The separation of compounds on the TLC plate depends on the polarities of the compounds. The compound with higher polarity will adsorb stronger to a polar stationary phase, such as silica, compared to the lower polarity compound. Therefore, the higher polarity compound travels much slower on the TLC plate when it is carried by a non-polar eluent. The opposite is for the compound that is less polar. Here is a diagram of a TLC setup. In this experiment, the TLC is carried out in a medium-sized beaker covered with a watch glass. This is an example of the TLC result of the spinach pigment. The spot on the right is a complete spectrum of the spinach pigment. The list of the complete spinach pigment's components can be found in your manual on page 129. Since carotenes are the least polar, the carotene spot is the yellow spot that is furthest from the origin line. The green chlorophylls are shown in the middle on the plate, and the yellow spots closer to the origin line are xanthophylls, which are the most polar among the pigments. The amount that each component of a mixture travels can be quantified using retention factors RF. The retention factor of a particular material is the ratio of the distance the spot moved above the origin to the distance the solvent front moved above the origin. It can be calculated using the formula shown below. On a silica gel TLC plate, a high polar compound should have a smaller RF value, compared to a less polar compound. Retention factors are useful in comparing the results of one chromatogram to the results of another. If the conditions in which the chromatogram are run are unchanged, same mobile and stationary phases, the retention factor for a given material should remain constant. Here is another example of RF calculation for multiple spots TLC plate.